This is part four of a study on how we can stir up the gift of God. Originally recorded on Blog Talk Radio over the internet. Edited, refined, and added to as needed. Let me pull up another scripture that shows the cursed children. Instead of those that are blessed with the Holy Ghost, you've got the cursed ones. This is in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6. Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 6 says, Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. That's that fire, the everlasting fire. That's the fire of the enemy that stays there for all of eternity. That's the fires of hell. He gives us over to that because we weren't obedient to his spirit. And so the spirit of the enemy is there instead. And that's a picture of the fires of hell. To dwell with that forever. Dwelling with those sins forever that they'll never be gone away. But if we uh, repent of those things while we're still alive, then that flesh gets burned up while we're still alive. And so then we can be saved. But if we, all the way to the end, if we refuse to repent, then we will be with the enemy for all of eternity. Verse 41 of Matthew 25. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. So that curse is that the spirit that comes upon the children of disobedience. That's the curse. Just like in the Garden of Eden, when... Eve believed the words of the devil. The curse came upon her as the result. And that's the fire of the enemy. Because if we're not receiving God's words, we are receiving the devil's words. And his words are also a fire. If we're believing the lie, that's what we're dwelling in is his fire. And if we do not repent before we die, will end up there for all of eternity. And I want to show another scripture that shows this, where the apostles actually gave somebody over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, so that their spirit would be saved. This is in 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and we'll start in verse 1 to get the picture. 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and verse 1, because remember, you either get the Spirit of God through obedience, but if we're disobedient, we get the other Spirit instead, which is the wrath of God. Okay, it says here in verse 1, it is reported commonly that there is fornication among you, and such fornication as is not so much as named among the Gentiles, that one should have his father's wife, and ye are puffed up, and have not rather mourned, that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. You see, we're not supposed to stay in fellowship with somebody that's doing those things, because that spirit is attached to them. The spirits that are the result of sins get attached to somebody. So if we stay around them, there's a chance that that spirit can attach itself to us too. Verse 2 says, And ye are puffed up and have not rather mourned that he that hath done this deed might be taken away from among you. For I verily as absent in body, but present in spirit, have judged already 
as though I were present concerning him that hath so done this deed. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when ye are gathered together in my spirit with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now watch this. To deliver. Here's the power of our Lord Jesus Christ to deliver such an one unto Satan because they've been sinning. And it says to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So they're given over to Satan to allow him to destroy their flesh so that the spirit will end up being saved so that they won't spend eternity in the fire of hell. A lot of times, one of the reasons that people are uh, sick and stuff like that, to bring them down to where they'll give their lives to the Lord, to where they'll see the destruction of their lives and end up, it brings them to their knees so that they will confess their sins and repent of their sins and ask the Lord for help. Pain and suffering, a lot of times that brings them to their knees because they get to the end of themselves and they know that they can't help themselves anymore, that that's when they need the Lord to help them through it. And so as that flesh is being destroyed in the illness or cancer or whatever, many people will come to the Lord as the result. And so their spirit will be saved. So you have that picture within the scriptures also. It says to deliver such an one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. So it's through the spirit of God that somebody can be delivered to Satan so that they can end up being saved. All right. Matthew 25, verse 41 again, says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. To me, uh, this would be somebody that still didn't repent, even when they'd been given over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. You've got that picture in the scriptures also. In Revelation chapter 16, where they still repented not to give him glory. Let's just start in verse 1 to get this in context. This is Revelation chapter 16 and verse 1. And it says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. So the children of disobedience have the wrath of God put upon them. This person that was sinning, he was given over to Satan, which is the wrath of God for the destruction of his flesh. So if you put that together with these scriptures, you're going to see that picture that God does with humanity in general. It says, And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, Go your ways and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore Here's sores, a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. Okay, so if you stop and think about the mark of the beast and what it is, that's sin. We're marked for destruction because of sin. So if God's pouring out his wrath upon those that are worshiping the image of the beast, which is their flesh, because the flesh hasn't died, because they're sinning, 
So if he's pouring out his wrath on them, it's given over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh. So that in the end result, they'll come away from worshiping the image of the beast. They'll repent and come to the Lord so they can be purged by the word of God. And then their spirit will be saved in the day of the Lord. So this is all the mercy of God happening here. It says, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image because that's man worshipping his own flesh. Because if we're still in our flesh, we haven't taken up our cross and followed him, have we? We haven't died to the image of man and living to the image of God. We're still worshipping ourselves and the things we want to do instead of God's way. And so that's worshiping the image of the beast because man is the beast. And this is going to be in the book of Ecclesiastics. That's Ecclesiastics chapter 3 and verse 18. Because remember, the beast is supposed to die. And you look at the world today. We're seeing the animal come out of people. People are killing one another. The lust of the flesh coming out into the open. That is the beast of man coming out into the open. They're doing whatever their flesh lusts want to do. They're not overcoming those flesh lusts, but actually those flesh lusts are overcoming their spirit. And they're giving themselves over to the lustful flesh instead of overcoming those lustful flesh desires and giving in to God. And so this manifestation of the beast we're seeing all around the world today with the wars with the killings there are actually individuals that kill others and that will actually eat of their flesh they'll take their heart out and consume it i'm not kidding you this is the beast coming out into the open and they're not hiding it anymore they're coming right out and bragging about what they're doing Ecclesiastics chapter 3 and verse 18. That's Ecclesiastics chapter 3 verse 18. It says, I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men that God might manifest them and that they might see. He wants us to see that in our flesh there is no good thing. That we are beasts. We're like animals. Giving ourselves over to whatever defilement we want to do. It says, I said in mine heart concerning the estate of the sons of men. That God might manifest them. And that they might see. It's to open our eyes so that we can see how defiled we are. It says that they might see that they themselves are beasts. That we're the beast. That's why we're supposed to take up our cross and follow him. That beast in us has to die. And if we're worshiping ourselves, if we're giving ourselves over to the lusts of our flesh we're worshiping the beast which is us do you see that picture that is what we're doing and so you see in the book of revelation let me get back to that one in revelation 16 verse 2 this picture is trying to kill the beast so that we will repent God gives us over to the wrath of God 
to destroy our flesh so that we'll repent and come to him before it's too late. This is Revelation 16, verse 2. It says, And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. If we're going to exalt our flesh, and give over to our flesh desires. We're worshiping the image of the beast instead of the image of God, which is the word of God. It says, And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. And they became blood. Remember, this is the wrath of God. Just like the Lord turned the uh, the Nile into blood when uh, he wanted to bring the Israelites out of Egypt. You got the same picture happening in the spirit. Verse 4, it says, And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters, and they became blood. And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. This is also the judgment of God. But if we will judge ourselves, then we won't have to be judged of God. And we judge ourselves by getting into the word and allowing it to convict us. And did you know we can actually judge ourselves unworthy of the kingdom of God? Verse 5 again says, And I heard the angel of the waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art and wast and shall be, because thou hast judged thus. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. That's what they're worthy of, the judgment of God. It says, And I heard another out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Notice it's the sun. It's like the sun god worship out of Egypt. And if we're giving ourselves over to that, it's going to scorch us with fire. Remember, the fire of God burns up the wood, while the other fire consumes also. So if people are worshiping something other than God, it's the picture of the flesh and the actual sun instead of the son of God. The flesh son, the worldly son, instead of the son of God. So if people are worshiping their flesh, it's like worshiping the uh, physical things instead of the spiritual. This is verse 9 of Revelation 16. And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God. Many times when judgment comes upon us because of our wicked ways, we turn around and respond by blaspheming God and blaming God for it. When it's the automatic result of our sins coming back upon us. It says, And men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. Remember, these plagues is the wrath of God. He's given us over to Satan for the destruction of the flesh that hopefully we'll end up repenting. But it says here, and they repented not to give him glory. Instead, they blasphemed him. Instead of letting this humble them so that they'll repent, they blaspheme him instead. It says, and men were scorched with great heat and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast. 
and wherever Satan is sitting. See, God sits upon those that are his. He's enthroned upon each one that is his. And the devil, whoever is in sin, that's the seed of the beast. This will be continued in part five of our study on how we can stir up the gift of God.